What's up everybody, Jason here again from PyQuant News, and today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics, well, two of my favorite topics. First is systematic trading, the second is Python, what else? And today I'm going to show you how to get set up with the Interactive Brokers API with Python, and we're going to go through and download some data, one minute resolution data for a contract that we specify. Today it'll be a stock, but it could be a futures contract, an options contract, whatever. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, the IB API, as it's known, is very nuanced. It's infamous. And it's extremely powerful. You can build some very, very powerful trading apps with it, but it's pretty tricky to get up and running. And it uses a pattern that most folks are not necessarily familiar with. It's a request callback pattern. So today we're going to get up and running with creating our very own interactive brokers trading app to download data. Through time, I'll continue to modify this app and we'll add more and more features as we go. But for now, we're just gonna get up and running. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is make some imports. And we're gonna import just some standard libraries. Next, we will actually import the Interactive Brokers API libraries. So we need the client, which is responsible for making the call to the IB server. And we need the wrapper, which is responsible for, let me make this one bigger. Uh, the wrapper is responsible for handling the callback. So the, the, the server does its thing, and then it sends a response back to the user. And then the user, of course, is then responsible for handling that response. Contract is how Interactive Brokers defines a security or an instrument. In order, I just always have this. It is here to actually specify an order. And then bar data is a bar of historical data that we're gonna get back from the API. So that imports pretty quickly. And let's actually create our class. So we will create our trading app class, and we will inherit both the eClient and eWrapper. And what that tells us is that our trading app class now has all of the functionality of both eClient and eWrapper. So if none of this makes any sense to you, and I absolutely suggest you going out to the Interactive Brokers documentation and read about what I'm talking about. Our initialize method returns nothing, and we instantiate a instance of our eClient parent and pass it in self, okay? I know this is all very nuanced, but the good news is that this is all boilerplate code that every single trading app will need. So as you see me do this again, you will see the exact same code. And also note, I'm using typing, right? So if, you're, if you've never seen you know, this colon dict with a list of these things, uh, that's just typing. It's not absolutely required, but it's good practice so that your IDEs know what type is expected. Okay, so that is the base class, or, or I should say the, the, the very beginnings of our trading app. The second thing we wanna do is just create a method that overwrites the error method from the e wrapper. And what this does is anytime there is an error, this method will be called and it will be passed a request ID, an error code, an error string, and then any advanced messages. And it doesn't return anything. In our case, all we are going to do is print the error. Obviously, we want to be able to deal with errors. This can get very complex, uh, but all we're going to deal with here is just printing it out. Okay, next we're going to create a, a method called get historical data. And this method takes in a request ID and a contract. Now this is our own custom method and it returns a data frame. The first thing that we want to do is set up a pandas data frame to house our data. And you know, up here we have our self.data, which is a dictionary. So we are going to set a key with request ID and in it we are going to set the value to an empty data frame with the time, high, low, and close, okay? Empty data frame. The next step here, this is just pure pandas by the way, is to set the index to the time column and do that in place. So now we have a pandas data frame inside of a dictionary at the class instance level with a key of request ID. All this will come together in just a second. Next, we are going to use the interactive brokers request historical data e client method. And this does kind of what it sounds like. It goes out to Interactive Brokers and it requests Interactive Brokers to return to us historical data. We need to pass in request ID, 
the contract from up here. We are going to say end date time. So if you leave end date time as an empty string, it just assumes that right now is the end date time. We are going to ask for one day worth of data. We're going to ask for one minute bars. We're going to ask for the midpoint. So the midpoint is the price between the bid and the ask. So the bid is the highest price you're able to sell an asset at, and the ask is the lowest price that you're able to buy an asset at. And those typically in very liquid assets like stocks, you're going to have a one cent spread. So the midpoint is going to be somewhere in between there. Okay. Use regular trading hours is false. So we're going to look at outside of regular trading hours. And then these remaining three arguments is just formatting. Okay. Now, when this method is called, interactive brokers takes a little bit of time to actually fulfill the request, if you will. So a very quick and dirty way to deal with this is just by sleep, right? So you can sleep, five seconds might be too long. We'll just wait for three seconds for interactive brokers to do its thing. And then we will return self.data, which is a dictionary at the key of request ID. And that is what we set up here. Well, you might be wondering, well, Jason, you just created an empty Pandas data frame. How does calling this thing fill this data frame with data. Well, that is where the callback method comes in. And the callback method is how interactive brokers deals with responses from their servers. So we are going to overwrite the wrapper method called historical data. And by the way, you can always tell an interactive brokers method because they don't use the proper Python uh, conventions for naming. They use the, the Java conventions for naming. So what historical data does, it's a callback method. And it is called by interactive brokers for every bar of data that is returned based on our request here. So the method that we, that we call in the get historical data method actually returns data into the historical data method, right? So we need to handle that. So the first thing we want to do is get the empty data frame. So let's ask for self.data, which is our dictionary, at request ID. And request ID, by the way, is passed from interactive brokers based on the request ID that we give it. So we are never calling this method. It does it automatically. The next step is to actually start populating our data frame with data from interactive brokers. Now, this looks like kind of a mess, but it's pure pandas. df.loc is the location-based label at the date time which is given to us by the bar. So Interactive Broker sends us a single bar of data. It's an object, and that object has an attribute date on it, and it is a timestamp. So we are going to coerce this date integer into a second-based timestamp. We are then going to look at where high, low, and close and set that equal to the high from Interactive Brokers, the low from Interactive Brokers, and close. So all in all, this is actually a pretty simple pandas interaction here. All we've done is set a row in a pandas data frame, okay? The next thing we wanna do is just make sure all of our rows are integer, excuse me, floats, that's the high, low, and close, because remember, the time is the index. And finally, we will set that data frame equal to our class instance level dictionary at the request ID key. So you remember that we actually set that up all here. We pulled it out and then we populated it with data and then we set it equal. And by time these three seconds is up, we will be returning that exact same variable. So this is how the callback request callback methods work. This is an interaction between these two methods, okay? Finally, let's just create a so-called static method. And this uh, static method is one that you can call at the class level. You do not need an instance of our class to call it. And we pass in a string symbol and we return an Interactive Brokers API contract object. First thing we do is we instantiate a contract. We set the symbol to our symbol. We set the security type to a stock. We ask for the smart exchange and we set the currency to US dollar and then we return the stock. Now, obviously this is hard coded for a stock you could set this to anything you want. In fact, this is probably a better way to do this, a get stock contract. Okay, we have to actually create an instance of our app here. And a couple of things to note. First off, I have 
Trader Workstation running. So Trader Workstation is Interactive Brokers Trader app. And let's instantiate a v instance of our app. And we're going to connect. And when we connect, we want to pass in the IP address and the port. This is a paper trading port and an arbitrary client ID. And we will do that on uh, port five. So I'm going to bring over my little uh, connection window here. And you can see that I'm connected on all these data farms. But you see down here that I've got this API connections listening on port 7497. So it's waiting for me to connect. I have yet to connect. So once I hit app connect, it will connect. And now you can see that you can see that I have a peer port IP client ID five, and the status is accepted. So I now am connected between Python and interactive brokers. Okay, so to start our app to actually run it, we're going to do it on a thread. And the reason we do it on a thread is though that we can continue executing code later after we run the app. Otherwise, if we run it, it will block and we just sit there with nothing. We can't do anything. So when I run this, the app is now running and you can see that you have all these error minus one messages. I can assure you these are not actually errors. But what we're saying here is market data farm connection is okay. This is exactly what we want to see and it's telling us that we are now connected to interactive brokers. Okay, cool. Next step is of course to then create a contract. So let's create a contract for NVIDIA and I named this get stock contract. So we have um, note that we're not using the instance of our app. It's because this is a static method. So we are just going to get our stock contract NVIDIA and let's print it out to just see what it looks like. And you can see it's just this list of things, but this is exactly what interactive brokers needs to see to actually execute on. Okay. Finally, we can get historical data and we will call app is this is an instance method, get historical data, and we'll pass it in our arbitrary request ID in my case, 99, and we'll pass it in a contract. So you can see I'm asking for contract of type contract, and that's what we get. So when I run this, it will take, it will go out, make the request, and then we are sleeping for three seconds. Do you remember? But what we end up with is a beautiful pandas data frame with one minute resolution data for NVIDIA. So this is in UTC. So this is uh, six o'clock PM 06 UTC. Right now it is 12 o'clock PM my time. So you can see that we are now have 607 rows of data across three columns at one minute resolution data for our NVIDIA contract. I hope that was explanatory for you. I love working with the Interactive Brokers API. I've been doing it for over a decade now. It is a bit tricky to get set up because it's a lot different than what you might be used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's really, really terrific. Enjoy watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody.